Unlike a lot of these films, one of the things that we set out to do was to try to make this real. And Jama felt very strongly he wanted it to be natural. He didn't want anything artificial. And he had said right from the outset, he only wants to use visual effects in places that we can't do practically. There is no book on how to do that. All the people that did the special effects, uh, you know, they work their ass off, like experimenting with different types of wax to get the feeling because I didn't want to go with the easier route, which has been like CG. There's very little pure visual effects shots in this movie. Most of the visual effects are what we call enhancements, subtle little things that you would never think were a visual effect. JAMA really combined visual effects with practical effects. So the actors aren't just kind of acting to a green screen, they're actually seeing and doing things that you know, they're really reacting to. JAMA wanted to keep things looking very real. As far as referencing the melting wax, the, fir the first to the original was, was um, actually real melting wax, I believe. I mean, they didn't have the visual effects that we have today. Our version of House of Wax is very loosely inspired by the original. House of Wax is based on the old Vincent Price movie, but we are sort of reinventing it. It is Kathy. It's Kathy's body under the wax. I knew it. I knew it all the time. There's an element in the original where a bad guy encases people in wax. And that kernel of the concept we kept with us. The idea of this wax museum, and inside the museum are wax sculptures that really are kind of corpses that are covered in wax. So that's what we've kept. So I think it's always looking at what we're about to do and saying, OK, how can we do this in a way that has never been done before? What is a new angle into it? So let's understand and recognize, OK, what's the cliche? OK, now how do we not do that? And how do we do something completely different? That's like a testament to like, you know, trying really hard, you know, like the effects people and, uh, and the art department people and, and the visual effects then taking over, you know, to making it look even better. For this material, he didn't feel it shouldn't have been very controlled and super stylized and really slick looking. Instead, it needed to be raw and real and almost have, in certain spots, almost a documentary style to it. It's almost hard to explain because you have to see the raw material and then you have to see it put together. And what you realize is that what looks kind of very off the cuff is actually incredibly planned and very strategic and comes together really well. There was a lot of collaboration. The special effects department was, was very instrumental in, in uh, providing the onset effects that we would have to then blend our effects into. He wanted a very dark, sort of ominous feel to the film. I think we achieved uh, photorealistic effects. The wax figures that were created uh, by the wax department, uh, we, had to, we had to help with those. They were very successful in melting the figures, but it, it just took a little bit too long. So we did some retiming of the of the melting sequences, but then we had to also keep the wax feeling like it was melting real time. There's a fine line between speeding something up and, and having it look like it sped up. So we, we composited patches back over at real speed, so we kept certain areas that were actually at real speed while the overall effect was the face was melting as we wanted it to. The face, Vincent's face as they were conjoined twins, uh, separated by their father when they were children. One of the children got, uh, got the full face, and the other one got sort of short-changed. As we see the reveal of Vincent's face, we realise that uh, there's actually a large portion of his face that's missing. Oh, shit! Joel wanted the, the, the face to be actually missing, to have space where the face should be, so that it couldn't be just a, um, a clever prosthetic, but it, it had to be something else. The only way to do it was to do a full-on visual effect. So we actually had a full half of a green face for the actor. And when the green face was put into the computer, we could actually sculpt what we had a sculpt on it. And it looks like something you've never really seen before. It was textured and shaded and lit to match the scene, and then composited in and blended into the face. So um, as you see the reveal of Vincent's face, you, you see that there's a piece of his face missing, and, and, um, and, it's, and it's, it's shocking. Jama picks the finest details, and uh, he knew what he he knew what he wanted to a certain extent. So we're all sort of going through a learning process of how this is going to 
eventually look. But a melting house had to be had to evolve as well. So we're all sort of going through a learning a learning process. If we were asked to do like a whole house made out of wax. And if that wasn't enough, then we were asked to melt it. Hey, how's that house of wax? The Visual effects in this picture deal predominantly with a melting house of wax, something where you dream about and then you say, make a house melt. With this vendor, Photon, they built us a beautiful scaled miniature. So this is a, a one-tenth one uh, representation of the interior set. We use this to explain the detail of the surface finishing, the level of degradation, and then we'll move into the one-third finished sections so that we can move towards the end result of the, of the filming so that we've got it correct. With visual effects these days, it's always a case of incorporating the physical and the CGI. Generally speaking, we simulated the wax uh, uh, separated, we shot elements for it, and there was a lot of compositing of dripping elements of, of uh, wax-like substances to, to create the feeling that the, the house was hot and really melting. That's where the movie, I think, became really tough for everyone. The effect of, of the melting house, I think, works very well. We shot miniatures with a lot of um, dripping action on them anyway. We composited a lot of drips um, just to bring it to life, you know, to, to really, to create exactly the sweet spots that we wanted. There's no technique on how to make wax, you know, look like it's melting. I mean, yeah, you just put heat on it, but if you put heat on it, you melt the actors too. You know, like, the amount of heat that you need to melt it is so great. Our special effects team has been experimenting for months with different forms of wax uh, because we found out that wax itself, when it melts, is not really that interesting. A melting house of wax is a it's sort of a concept that's, that's fairly broad. There was a lot of discussions about what the wax should actually look like. And it was a lot of testing and it was a lot of meetings. One of the main challenges of making a melting house of wax is that Everyone has a different idea of, of how a melting house of wax should melt. Nick, the wall. Should it be hot, should it be thick, should it be transparent, should it be opaque, should it should it be a bit more viscous than, than real wax, because real wax, you know, can look a bit water-like. So there's a lot of discussions on, on arriving at just the right, just the right texture to create movie wax, if you like. The last 10 minutes of the movie happens while the house is melting, so basically, we have to hold that state is between solid and liquid for 10 minutes. That was something that was, it wasn't really explained on the script. So that's one of the aspects that if you would have to like compare the old movie to this one, this one is worth watching because of that, you know, because I think we really pushed the envelope in that aspect.